Hello and welcome to Worship Online with Upper Clyde Parish Church. We're coming to the end of our Advent journey. Bethlehem is in sight. Only, only a few more sleeps to go. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent. And as we've moved through these Sundays, we've looked at the traditional Advent themes. So we've moved from hope to peace to joy. And in this time of worship, we'll be looking at love. So, having spent the last couple of weeks in the company of John the Baptist and his family, we are going to go back to a time when Elizabeth was still carrying John, and we're going to meet some of the extended family. We'll be meeting Elizabeth's cousin Mary, who is also expecting. And before we move more fully into our time of worship, just a couple of notices. As it's the fourth Sunday of the month, there's worship at Leadhills Village Hall at 5 p.m. this evening. So do come along for some Christmas carols and Christmas reflections. We have music uh, provided this evening by a couple of our friends from the Leadhills Silver Band. And as we do normally, and just to emphasize in light of the First Minister's statement earlier this week, we are very COVID compliant in the way that we are meeting. We continue to maintain our social distancing. We continue to insist that face masks be worn. We have a one-way flow system and there'll be sanitizer available. So uh, do come along and enjoy this lovely Christmas carol time uh, this evening at Lead Hills. And one more thing, as I mentioned uh, last week, our Let's Get Growing project has moved from seed potatoes to planting trees. Angela was able to secure 420 wild fruiting tree saplings, which were donated by the Woodland Trust. And she was, she was wanting to rehome them for Christmas. Well, I just want to say a wee update on that. All the trees have now been claimed. So thank you everyone for getting behind this project and also to help us work uh, a little towards reducing our carbon footprint within the parish. For those of you who knew her, I've got some sad news to share, which is that our friend and our fellow church member, Jerry Crutcher, died earlier in this week. And for those of you who live around the area and would like to attend the funeral, that's going to be held at Elvenfoot Cemetery on Wednesday, Wednesday the 22nd at 11 a.m. A wee note about Christmas worship. Given the way that Christmas falls this year, we're not going to have our usual watch night service in the church building. I will provide a simple online service, however. And this is because the Kirk session and I felt it was a little bit unfair to expect, to expect anyone to stay back after watch night and deep clean the church after midnight or to come in on Christmas Day to prepare the church for Sunday. So had there, had there been a 72 hour gap, we would have been fine, but there's just not enough time to do that. So instead of our usual watch night, we're going to be celebrating Christmas on Sunday the 26th with a bit of a carol fest, some poems and maybe even a wee story or two. And because the 12 days of Christmas start on Christmas Day, we'll also have the opportunity to sing a good few more carols the following week as we think about the wise men visiting from the east. These are all our notices, so let's take a moment of quiet as we prepare ourselves to meet with God in worship. Let's be still. our call to worship. Lord God, you are coming to us. We watch and wait. Lord God, your love gives birth. We plan and pray. A child will be born nine months nearly past for Mary in an unfolding mystery. Nine months nearly past for Joseph in deepening joy. Nine months of watching, waiting, planning, praying. God comes to us. God's love gives birth. God lives in love. So get ready. The time of expectancy is nearly over. The time of delivery is nearly here. The word will be made flesh. A child will be born. 
God lives in love. So let us worship the God who loves us. Our opening hymn for this time of worship is, is about one of the heavenly messengers that features in the Christmas story. It's the angel Gabriel from heaven came. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, before we ever had faith in you, you already had faith in us. You sought us out from afar, longing to include us in your purposes. Holy is your name, your mercy everlasting. Before we ever hoped in you, you already hoped in us. You entrusted us with a vision of the world transformed, knowing what our humanity could be. Before we ever came to love you, you already loved us. You wooed and welcomed us, inviting us to be your partners. Holy is your name. Your mercy is everlasting. God of the insignificant, you call us to be your change in the world, but too often we prefer things as they are. You call us to show humility, but sometimes we like to show off. You call us to challenge those who misuse their power, but we prefer not to rock the boat. You call us to show strength when people need support, but often in weakness we turn away. Give us courage and strength to stand alongside those whom the world considers insignificant, those at the bottom of the pile with no control over their own lives, no say in how things are done, those who struggle to survive. For in doing so, we stand alongside Christ. 
kind and trusting God, you have said yes to us. Give us strength to say yes to you. We offer you our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught his friends when praying to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. A reading from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephratah, who were one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Amen. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. Verses 39 to 55. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women! and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. 
for he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Amen. And thanks be to God for the hearing of his word. Let's pray to the one who in love lifts up and champions the lowly and shows us what true love is. So we pray. Amen. She is old, too old, common wisdom says, to be carrying a child. And yet here she is nearing the end of her term in this unexpected pregnancy. She is young, innocent, some would say, in the ways of the world, and yet here she is, hearing the voice of an angel telling her of the child that she will bear. Two women, cousins, meeting with hearts full, surprised by joy, astonished by the God who has blessed them. Two women with child, waiting in expectation, wondering what God will bring about through their children. Before Zechariah sings after the naming of his child John, the young woman Mary will sing a song of love and liberation. It is a song that has become known through the centuries as the Magnificat, named this for its first line in the old language of the church, Latin, Magnificat anima mea dominum, my soul magnifies the Lord. In her rejoicing, Mary's whole focus is upon God and of making God's name known and doing so in the pattern of psalmists and prophets before her. As Zechariah's song will ring out of God and of the child John, so Mary's song before it rings out telling of the great love of God shown in the scattering of the proud, the ones who lord it over others, who use their influence and talents to punch down on those less fortunate as against reaching out a hand and helping them up. 
The song sings of God's love in bringing down those in power, calling them to account for the ways in which they've used their power for their own advantage, helping themselves to the best pickings on the table, the best and juiciest deals on offer, making rules for others to obey while they themselves place, are placed above the law and they do as they will. Radical love sings out, challenging the age-old way of things, challenging systems in which poverty and hunger are normalized and where those who suffer are blamed and where those who feed off the suffering grow rich and are held up as figures to be admired. Indeed, it is a song that is so radical in nature that down through the ages, tyrants and despots and all who rule through might will do their best to suppress or censor it. So fearful are they at its power to empower the powerless, to fill the hopeless with hope, to breathe life into apathy and despair. Mary's song is a song of rejoicing, a song remembering the deeds of a faithful God from generation to generation, a song proclaiming the God who does not overlook the lowly, a song filled with awed delight at the God who sees the singer when others count her as insignificant because of her age, because of her gender. Surely all generations will call me blessed she sings. Mary's song is made all the more powerful as it is sung in a time of foreign occupation, of an empire taking what it likes from the land it has conquered, of puppet kings colluding with their Roman masters to keep some small modicum of power and to maintain their lives of privilege. What, what does it matter if custom and law is occasionally bent to fit around their needs? What does it matter if their own people suffer? And having lived so long with privilege, those not of the ruling class are barely noticed, are disregarded. They are merely cogs in the wheel of a system intent on keeping them down. Even so, the small nation of Israel has a history of prophetic songs, of God's justice, of God's redeeming love. Long before Mary's song, Micah's words tell of one to come forth from an unlikely place, a wee backwater, unremarkable Bethlehem. And this one comes from a small and overlooked clan. Micah talks of one who would rule tenderly, feeding his flock, one who would rule justly so that all would have stability and security, one who would not rule by might of hand but with the power of love and through that love would bring peace to all the world. Mary's song is extraordinary. It's Old. It's a manifesto for change, a song that tells of old systems being pulled down and a new system being put in place. It's a song of the transformational power of love, God's love, of promises made and kept. And whenever anyone says religion and politics don't mix or the church shouldn't get involved in politics, point them, point them to Mary's Magnificat. Often we imagine Mary as wee, demure, passive, but, but how bold she is when God's messenger Gabriel brings her the news that she's been chosen to bear the Messiah, the, the great rescuer, while she may very understandably be fearful. She listens and takes in what's been said and she agrees to God's earth-changing plan, a plan that will also change the course of her life, a life where there'll always be whispers about her reputation and who the real father of this child will be. It's a life watching and wondering at her son, knowing him marked for greatness, a life that, having said yes to God, will bring with it great cost. She will know for a time exile as a refugee in Egypt, fleeing from a king hell-bent on killing her child. 
and later she will watch this child grow into manhood, watch him as he takes on his ministry, make enemies and eventually die. But there will also be hope and joy and love and resurrection. But for now, but for now, bold Mary, brave Mary, will sing a song of liberation and love. It's a song that we hear even now, 2,000 years later, a song still radical in its message of God's amazing love. It's a song that tells of the upside down values of God's kingdom. And as we listen to the words, as we speak and even sing the words, may they encourage us, may they remind us that just as God saw Mary, God sees us. And that each one of us, as those seen and called by God, can sing and live into the hopes expressed in Mary's song of liberation. A song of a love that came down at Christmas. Love all lovely, love divine. As God blesses each one of us with his love, may that love move us to become more fully agents of God's radical love in the world, this day and every day. Amen. And let's pause now for a time of reflection as we listen to the song, Love Came Down at Christmas. We come before God in prayer once more, so let us pray. Faithful God, in this time of giving and of receiving, we come together in our different ways to worship you. Whether gathered online or in one building, we are your people and one in you as a community, as a family. We offer our gifts and talents to you and each other in the hope that we will bring your kingdom ever closer. Take our tokens of money, take of our gifts and skills and bless and use them for the good of your church and your people. Loving God, we thank you for friends and loved ones who have been there at important times, for those who have laughed and cried with us, shared our smiles and wept tears of their own with ours. For those who have brought comfort to our sadness or traced a thread of hope through the midst of despair, 
those who have rejoiced at our good news and never resented or envied our victories. For those who have reflected your light in the darkest of our night times and brought to our confusion a sense of your purpose. For those who have been there for us through joy and failure, who have found the right words and known when to hold their peace. By your grace, may your blessing rest upon these friendships that as we learn to love more deeply, we may also learn to be more open to you. And loving God, we give you thanks for the great gift of your friendship, for coming alongside us, for your companionship, your care, your love. We are truly blessed. Lord God of so much giving, bless all for whom we pray this day. For all your people around the world, no matter their colour or creed, language or diversity, as this Advent draws to a close, may they know the importance of this week in all its earth-shattering fullness. May they see the immensity of your gift that goes on giving. We pray for those for whom Christmas will be especially hard this year as a result of the challenges, changes and consequences of this past year and more. Those who have lost family or friends, homes or employment, health and well-being. For those who feel life as they have previous, previously known slipping away with uncertainty and insecurity. We pray for the thousands affected by catastrophic weather conditions, floods, rains, wind, storm, tornado, snow, for health and social services, their staff and clients, that in the midst of illness and need, in the midst of birth and death, in the midst of pain and distress, in the midst of their darkest and most worn out nights, the light of Christ may shine into their world. For those who will travel this week or hope to travel, for those who will need to stay at home, for those visiting and those receiving guests and who may not be having the Christmas they had hoped for or planned, may they together be aware of each other's needs, especially in these COVID times. Give us all the sense of care and compassion that we may comfort the distressed and show care for all. We pray and give thanks for those who go above and beyond what is expected of them, those who show extra love and generosity, for the secret Santa givers, for food bank donors and organisers, for all who share the real Christmas story, the gospel message of love, life, joy and hope. And we pray for ourselves and our families and friends, whether we meet with them or not over the Christmas season, may we be a blessing to each other, sharing love, joy, hope, good news and gospel stories. And in a moment of silence, we bring before you all who are on our minds and in our hearts this day, and we offer to you our own particular needs. Lord God of so much giving, of so much love, bless all for whom we pray this day. Amen. Our closing hymn is The Virgin Mary Had a Baby Boy. Come
we close this time of worship with a prayer and a blessing. God, who blessed the earth with life and love, thank you that you greet us in the person of Jesus and pour your blessings on us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Empowered by the same Spirit, send us out to be signs of hope and blessing to a world so in need of your peace and to people so in need of your love. And so, as we go, may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. After this Advent time of waiting, we're now just a step away from Christmas. So join us if you can for a short online watch night service this Christmas Eve. And so until then, or until we next meet, take care, goodbye, and God bless. Mm -hmm.